We're really looking forward to what's um, going to happen in a uh, year in Holland, Amsterdam, yeah. tonight. What do you think of that? You know, it's your, this is where you grew up in yeah. Amsterdam. The yeah, company yeah. iForce is based in Amsterdam. All your friends, your family is going to be there. It's definitely yeah, maybe the next step compared to San Francisco, exactly. right? I think it, it's going to be a little different also compared to uh, San Francisco. San Francisco was more for the international uh, um, well, um, viewers. And uh, now we're here in Amsterdam. Uh, I, I grew up in Amsterdam. And uh, what you already said, iForce is from Amsterdam. Uh, pressure is on. Exactly. Hey? Yeah. Pressure we, is uh, on. <laughs> we, we have like uh, we do two viewings now, so it's like 1,600 people with a big after party also, and uh, yeah, it's hard to like uh, tip the the uh, we transfer uh, premiere in San Francisco, but um, I think uh, well we're, we're gonna do that. We're gonna manage. For sure, we're yeah. gonna do it. Yeah. I, We're all looking forward to it. It's it's a special night. You know, I, I'm even a little bit nervous. I am nervous. When I just came driving from Nordwijk, I was driving and I was like, oh shit, we're actually doing a huge premiere in one of the biggest and coolest movie yeah. theaters that, that Holland has to offer. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to show people what we've been working on for two and a half years. You know, it's a lot of sweat and tears in that movie. Yeah. And a lot of cool moments, of course. And uh, now... Yeah, we're gonna show the big audience. Yeah, I can't wait, actually. Very nervous. You got another question? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, from Anouk Timmerman. Uh, Anouk um, uh, The question is, uh, do you think you'll get uh, recognized more after this uh, movie is gonna premiere, but it's, it's also gonna launch uh, on iTunes and on uh, Red Bull TV, but um, is this also, yeah, what, what do you think? I mean. The world well, is going to see your face more often now. Well, I think uh, the sport of kiteboarding really needed a movie like this. You know, kiteboarding has been around for about 16, 17 years now, and it's been growing and growing. But um, I think, yeah, the sport really needed a movie like this. You know, a high production movie with really, really well filmed uh, footage. And it also tells a story. And I think a lot of movies that we saw in the past was just crazy kite porn as you would say which is also super cool but yeah. the chance we had with this movie especially because it's uh it's 80 minutes 80 minutes plus we have a lot of time to actually tell stories and really really show the best footage that we shot over those two and a half years and um i think um yeah it really will bring kiteboarding to the next level you know or really give a good a good benchmark to the sport and uh i think from here we can definitely grow the sport into the future where we're hopefully going to jump bigger and do crazier yeah. tricks and get more people involved into the sport as well because the diversity of the sport is really beautiful it's not only freestyle or it's not only big air it's yeah. also wave riding and racing the total, the total package the total package exactly and for um, you personally i mean uh, do you think uh, just get, getting back to the question you will get recognized more I hope so, Real yeah. I, I, I would think so, you know. There's been a lot of hype around the movie and uh, yeah. we have a lot of... Uh, I'm very honored as well to be part of the movie, of course. And I definitely think... Uh, well, I'm hoping, of course, we're going to get uh, recognized because that's always uh, like a reward on your work. Yeah. And uh, if you, if you uh, go to Brazil or Cape Town or wherever you go and people know your name and uh, that's always... Uh, like a nice shoulder tap. I think in, in San Francisco people were like... Uh, Going to you, grabbing a signature, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it happens. Maybe yeah, I feel. Uh, so. Yeah, who knows? Also uh, on who the knows? Street, does it happen? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes yeah. I get recognized. Yeah, nice. so hopefully the sport is gonna bring the sport to the next level, and um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna do that with chapter one. All right, nice. Uh, oh, should I ask you a question yeah, now? Huh? Okay, time. we got some questions here, so sometimes we're looking down to see uh, see what the next question is. Um, you travel a lot. I do. Like and uh, like myself. And I know how that is. Sometimes it's hard to uh, get your work done on the road. And uh, I think you came back from Chile, Chile straight yeah. to San Francisco, from San Francisco to LA. And you only came back, what, like two days ago or three yeah. days ago? I touched on yesterday. So oh, yesterday. Even. A little uh, jet lagged. Uh. <laughs> Living the rock star lifestyle. Exactly, eh? exactly. Um, yeah, it's it's it's. I, I mean, I love my work. It's uh, it's it's nice to travel uh, all year, um, but it's always hard to when you when you're let's say in LA. Uh, it's super hard to also do the to do your work things you have to do here in, in the Netherlands. You have an eight-hour time difference. Uh, so when you go to bed, then the 
the, your cell phone is gonna start ringing and you, all the emails are uh, getting pushed in. So yeah, you work like a day for the shoot over there and then at night you're just uh, busy with clearing your mailbox. Yeah, yeah, I saw that because I was there, I was there as well. You know, I was staying in the same hotels as these guys and uh, it's crazy because the, the whole day they're filming and running around with all this camera gear and I think I have the easy, the easy job, you know, I just get to do the fun stuff and, uh, but these guys at night, you know, I'm tired, I need to go to bed, but in the yeah. meantime, these guys are still like organizing all the Europe stuff that's happening, up, so, yeah, uh, yeah, all the stuff sharp. that's happening at home and that you need to organize for the next day, so. Yeah, I think it's a pretty hectic, uh, hectic times, right? It is, it is. Well, I'll see you tonight. I'm gonna we're pull gonna, somebody else in. We're gonna do a little swap, yeah. ladies Very and gentlemen. Exactly. See you later, see you Egon. This was Egon. Hopefully you guys are gonna be there tonight. And if you do have some questions, please just type them in and we get them, we'll probably get them from someone. And this is the master of disaster. Bram, yeah. Bram van Vught, the legend. He's also been a huge part of um, our movie. He is the guy that organizes everything. If there's a problem with flights or anything, this is the guy that we need to call. And he is the best guy in organizing stuff. And um, thank you, thank you. And uh, no, this guy's been working so hard. He's been running around through all these countries trying to make sure that the kiters do their kite stuff, the film guys do their film stuff, and whatever happens behind the scenes that needs to be organized, yeah, this is the guy that, that does it, and um, he does a great job at it. What an introduction, hey? what an introduction. I will give him a round of applause. Yeah, I'm so the only one here, from, but... Uh, I want to thank you too for uh, joining us in the movie. Uh, all the riders were super stoked uh, about this project, and. Uh, I couldn't have done it without them. You need stars to make something like this. And uh, yeah, I think all together with all the guys involved, uh, we put down the film that's premiering tonight in Amsterdam here at Kaczynski. Um, we had a premiere last week in San Francisco, which was great. Really cool. We all went there. And now it's uh, the European premiere, so I'm stoked. Yeah. I think you have some questions. I right? have some I questions for you, dude. You read them out? Or? I'll read them out. Hey, listen, we've been uh, traveling around the world for two and a half years. You've pretty much done all the trips. I've had the luck to do uh, four of them. And um, there's like a millions of stories, right? There's, I have, there's so many stories. But what is like the best story that you would be like if you're... If, what is like the story you would tell your grandkids? Like, oh, you know what? Grandpa made a made a movie like uh, 30 years ago, and this is one of the coolest things that happened to me. What, what would it be from this, from this movie? Well, for, for me personally, I think it was, uh, we did one trip to uh, British Virgin Islands where we were filming with Richard Branson. And um, it was actually cheaper there to rent a boat and stay on the boat than in a hotel with the whole crew. So we rented this huge uh, 50 foot catamaran. And uh, I was also- Sounds the, fancy, dude. Yeah, I was also <laughs> the only one with a, with a sailing license, so, so I was actually the captain and the producer there. Uh oh. And uh, it was just a great week, you know. We were camping out in front of the bay there where Richard Branson lives. So, yeah, Richard Branson is also in the movie, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Crazy. It was a nice park, yeah. And, Sorry. Uh, so, that was awesome. And uh, we went fishing and diving off the boat and we caught some barracuda and sharks and everything. We threw everything back. We all. Uh, all the Eco. Coffee, all the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, fish you can eat, right? Fish <laughs> yeah. you can eat. And uh, I think one of the first trips, we, the first trip we actually did, it's already two years ago, we went to Ireland together. Yep. That was pretty crazy. That was such windy. A trip. So windy. We rented a car for five days and we totaled the, f the car, remember? Oh, yeah. You did, it, I can, I can, we were driving we back tell, after, tell, after yeah. four days of <laughs> filming and we were all super tired. We had to drive to the airport in the middle of the night and I was sleeping on the back seat like this. Just with one eye on the road, and all of a sudden I feel the car just go whoop whoop sliding, and I'm like, oh no! And I see this wall come towards us, and we just bam hit, hit the wall, completely destroyed the side of the car. Woke everybody up. Everybody, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> what but we survived. We survived. Yeah. And the day before, the door opened and blew off, so we came back to the rental car, and that that's where. Give them the keys. That's where this guy is making sure uh, we get away unscarred, you know. Yeah. We make the damage and uh, Bram usually fixes it. And uh, 
Yeah, yeah he's, he's not, a, not meant to damage, damage myself. So. Yeah, and then he fixed it his, uh, himself. So. Yeah, so we got out of there. That's For nice. sure. But I'm not sure if we got back to the same rental place there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on the blacklist. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe you... Uh, yeah, are you going the wrong way, man? The wrong way. We have an iPad here, you which you guys can probably not see. Did you get these ones already from Anouk? Yeah, we did those already. Any more questions from the audience? Hey, we have um, the Do we have the feed? Yeah. With some questions. No more questions from the audience. No feed. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay. I will ask Bram some uh, questions. Yeah. Hey, if you do a, a huge project like this, where, where, do, you, where do you actually start? Because, you know, kiteboarding is not a very big sport. It's uh, hard to find sponsors sometimes. And doing a, 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 a movie like this costs money, you know? It costs money to fly the crew around, fly the riders around, rent cars, have all the latest camera gear, because everything is shot in 4K, of course, which is just absolutely beautiful. But it adds up. Yeah, but yeah, where do you, how do you start? Because well, you start cannot... with an idea, and uh, the idea was there with Bob and Arthur and me. Um, and Elon started uh, thinking about a big project. We wanted to do something with kiteboarding, and uh, because we know everybody in the, in the scene, and, uh, and we knew something needed to happen because all the sports they have their own big action sports movies, and uh, we thought it was time for kiteboarding. The sport has grown up enough to uh, to have a big list of talents. We have 21 riders in the film. Uh, and still there's guys missing that should have been in there. Um, so I think uh, that's where the idea started. And then I started calculating like, oh, if we do this and this and this, those countries, those are the amazing spots we want to go. Then obviously you end up with a budget of about three or four million. So that, <laughs> that's a lot of money. We started a Kickstarter and uh, we didn't get enough response there. So don't, we, we failed. Didn't, we didn't, we failed. You know, we didn't make it. What, but, uh, what, what was the first thought that went through your mind, you know? Because we were all yeah, trying get, to get the financing there, we and then we filmed. Bummed. We were super bummed that we didn't make the Kickstarter. But on the other hand, if you do a Kickstarter, uh, all the people that fund you, they want something back. So they want a t-shirt or a cap. So it's not like all the money comes in you can use for your film. It's only a small percentage, actually, because you have to do a lot. So we were quite happy that we didn't have to ship out to 50,000 people, <laughs> all these stickers. All these t-shirts <laughs> and stickers. <laughs> So we're like, all right, that didn't work. Now let's. Uh, and then I think Red Bull stood up, Red Bull uh, Media House. They said, like, oh, we we wanted to do a project like that, so let's connect. And, and we started the meetings and we started uh, fixing the budget. Three uh, three million was out of the question, so we, yeah, we, we 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 lowered that down a lot and, uh, and we got creative with traveling, seeing where you guys went, and we just follow you around, smaller crews and. In the end, it's still a really high-end production. Not, nothing has ever been done like this. But, For sure. Uh, but um, we have to be really creative. And uh, Red Bull came aboard, and of course, we transfer. We transfer has been our uh, big uh, parachute. Um, they believed in us from the start. And, uh, they didn't slow us down, though. They actually gave us no. a push. Yeah, and the, the more parachute. meetings we had, and once we started shooting, they believed in it more and more, and, and we just we, we could get what we wanted. And uh, O'Neill and Red, Red Bull and Mystic, of course. Yeah, they were also great parts. Thanks, part, you guys. The industry brands that uh, backed us up, which was really great. So that that was the budgets we round, and then we started shooting, and then then it's just about blowing the budget. Yeah, so, yeah. Two, but that's easy, know. right? <laughs> you, once you have the money, I think it's easier to blow it than. Uh, so it's all gone now. So yeah. We're out of money, and uh, but we have two great venues booked. Uh, two two shows for tonight. Two times eight hundred people. The film will tour uh, through Europe as well, Tarifa, Hamburg, uh, London, and Los Angeles. South Africa, we're going to set one up. Sick. The season is starting there. Keep an eye, so keep an eye out on chapter1themovie.com to see where the premiere is. There might be a premiere really close to your house, right? And uh, make sure uh, to give a look on the website and uh, who knows, maybe it's uh, in your back garden, you know? All right, we got a question. So we got a question from? Um, Peter from the UK. Peter from the UK. What's up, Thank dude? You, Peter. Um, to Kevin, if you had to choose one discipline, yeah, is it big air or wave? Oh, you know, I get that question quite often. And to me, the beauty of kiteboarding that there's not a rule that you have to ride one certain way. The beauty of kiteboarding is that there's so many different disciplines and you can combine disciplines and I just try to do whatever the conditions are best for. I love big air, I love wave riding, I love freestyle. There's just, and now this new thing came along, foiling. It's uh, it's, it seems to never end. 
But I think the cool thing about kiteboarding that it keeps evolving. Every day there's a new thing that comes out. You know, there's either a new trick or a new kite or a new bar or a new foil or a new board. And the, the evolution of that really keeps you super motivated. Yeah. And I'm always up for learning something fresh and learning something new. And uh, I love being a complete cook with trying a new style. And because that's the way you learn the quickest. And uh, yeah, I hope and I th I'm pretty much uh, I'm pretty sure that kiteboarding will stay developed, you know, uh, by every uh, within the next couple of years. And, and is there uh, anything you don't like about that? Did you, because you started as a competition guy. I remember I used to work as a, at O'Neill as a team manager and I was Kevin's team manager. I was following him around and he was full on um, into the tour. And uh, after a couple of years, you know, you won whatever you could win. And then uh, I have the feeling you're kind of over the competition form. Is that something you could say? Is that true? Yeah. You know, competing is a different, is, is you got to dedicate pretty much your whole life to it, to, uh, to succeed. And uh, that's what I did for 12 years. I still love doing it. But the freestyle part, I've been doing it, the freestyle part for, yeah, 12 years. And I've been to most of the venues, which was beautiful. I learned a lot. I lost a lot of competitions, but I also won a lot uh, of competitions. So, um, but I felt like I needed to do something new and to keep myself on top of my game. I always like to challenge myself in new things, you know, pull myself out of my comfort zone, try to do stuff I've never been done, uh, that I never did before. And uh, Luckily, I had the opportunity uh, to move more out of the competition side and move more into movie making and doing cool projects with my sponsors, O'Neill and Nash and X Dubai. We also, and we also had the conversation back in the day where you said, like, I, I want to compete less, but I still want to be a pro rider. I want to be a pro, pro athlete and grow. Yep. And I think we, we made kind of a plan together where you could still grow your image and your brand. And For you, sure. Where you uh, would have more fun in doing uh, what you like. And I think also the audience loves what, what Kevin is doing right now. One of the guys, first guys who started filming actually, made his uh, Kev session. Yeah, uh, a long time ago, uh, right? Also with the iForce guys. Um, also with Nick Hudemans, uh, yep. the, the Dutch director. And um, I think that, that was the way to go at that time. And it's crazy, it's yeah. To keep pro progressing and having fun in what you do, and uh, kind of leading the pub, uh, you don't necessarily have to win every time. You can you can do other stuff too. Yeah. To yeah well, the mo the most important thing for me is that. Uh, like in anything you do in life, whether it is your job or hanging out with friends, I think the most important thing in life is that you need to do something that you love to do, that you have a passion for. And I think if you do something you love to do, it never feels like work and you become good at it fairly quickly because if you do so, it doesn't feel like you're putting in effort because you like to do stuff. And uh, I think uh, if you can, um, if that's your, your goal in life, you're doing really well. And, uh, I would just suggest to. Uh, always smiling, but I know it's still sometimes it's pretty tough. I mean, we met in San Francisco last week. Yeah, Kevin came in on the day before on the flight. You know, it's it's a nine, ten hour flight. The next day after the premiere, he went back. He slept actually in our hotel room on the extra bed and uh, living the rock star yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, I was sleeping on a fold folded bed. Yeah. I felt like we uh, five other guys in one room because the budget is gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> low budget, low budget. And I know the next day you went back to Amsterdam and had to jump straight into the car to Belgium for a clinic. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, I came home. I was so jet lagged. I couldn't move for two days. So <laughs> I did that as well. Off, that's off for, yeah. uh, for you, man. Right? Yeah, really. Cool. Yeah, I had to sleep a little bit as well, but I'm it's good. See if there's anybody uh, here who wants to maybe, maybe Bob? Arthur or Bob or Bob. Bob, Bob, you we're gonna do a little swap. Yeah, right. Right, bro, Thanks, dude. Guys. Thanks, guys. Okay, we're gonna do a quick swap. I'm gonna stay here. Yep. There he is. How's it going? Really well. I this got is a present right here. A present. Not for you. Because ah. you got enough O'Neill gear, so come on. This, this sweater for people to uh, to win. Uh, and I think um, it's the, the the question. What did I need to do? Yeah, people need to answer a question. And it's how many times you've been in Madagascar. That's so a good question. The question is how many times has Kevin been to Madagascar? If you do know the answer, answer it. And you might win this super cool clean wave t-shirt. Let me introduce you, dude. This is Bob, our director of the movie 
chapter one. He's been uh, working for iForce for, well, he started the company with seven Arthur, of course, ago. seven years ago. Yeah. And um, Arthur started actually the brand, which he, uh, he's going to come later. And we started doing Cape Sessions. Yeah, and that then was actually the first project that uh, Arthur did together with you in yeah. Cape Town. And then uh, Bob came along and uh, it it's, uh, yeah, that was the beginning of, um, of iForce. And uh, it's crazy to see from how we started with a small little camera to how the company is now, you know. Yeah, I don't even know how many employees you guys have, but it's cool to see how big the company has grown. And uh, yeah, great job. And yeah. great job on the movie too. You guys did, uh, did really, really good. I think it's uh, it's amazing that like after so many years, you know, after Cape Sessions and uh, Hidden Lines and stuff, you know, uh, uh, he finally get the chance to uh, make a movie with everyone involved. You know, all the all the kite surfers, a lot of dis disciplines. Um, you know, from big air to wave riding to storm chasing. You know, it's all in there, and uh, I think this is. You know, we hope with this movie to inspire many people to to go kiting and you know get their hair wet and. Um, you know, have some fun on the water. For sure. Yeah. Now, I think uh, I think with this movie we're gonna definitely uh, definitely do it. Hey, there's um, we've been filming this thing for for two and a half years, but we started filming two and a half years ago. But when did the the idea came up in your head that you were like, you know what? I think we need to make a really really big movie. We need to take kiteboarding and maybe even I force to to the next step. When was that moment that you thought? Okay, we need to do it, and we got, we're going to do it with kiteboarding. You could have chosen for snowboarding or surfing, which are way bigger sports. But why? Why actually did you uh, did you choose for kiteboarding? Mm, I think um, maybe when when we premiered the, the Hidden Lines in the in the cinema in in uh, Scheveningen, uh, I think three years ago, um, we felt the the you know the power of of showing a movie on the big screen with with good audio and. Uh, I think then we realized okay we, we should really make like a cinema movie like with, with um, you know um, we wanted to, to be out there with the best surfing movies and, and snowboarding movies and since you know there hasn't wasn't any kiteboarding movie at that time that, that do, did that we thought okay we, we should be the guys doing this you know so let's let's try to do it and it was quite a struggle to, to get it off the ground because it was yep. Yeah, kite surfing is still pretty small. Yeah, but, uh, totally. And especially if there's not really any other big production movies in kiteboarding, you can't really say like, hey, look, we did, well, of course we did hidden lines and stuff, but this is like next level stuff. And I know in skiing and surfing, there's a lot of movies that you can be like, oh, this is the impact, you know? But yeah, I think it's really cool that iForce actually chose for kiteboarding. And I think uh, it's a very smart move. Yeah, well, th uh, I think for us as a company, maybe it wasn't the smartest move. Or, uh, maybe financially <laughs> not, but... And all of these say, yeah, hard hard to call us, Go for it. Yeah, just the go for it mentality. project, you know, and, and um, like, it took us so much time and effort and anything to, to make it, but, uh, you know, it felt right. And uh, that's, that's why we wanted to do it. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool to hear. Because, uh, you know, we, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud that, uh, that, that you guys did it, you know, and that you guys did it with the crew you had and the, the passion you put into, into this project. Because, you, need, you know, you have, to, you have to also know that iForce is a production company that, you know, they have employees, they have money to make, make because they have salaries to pay and new cameras to buy because otherwise other production companies are going to buy fancier cameras and they're going to, you know, make cooler stuff, and there's a lot of uh, competition in uh, in the production scene. And making such a big move for iForce to actually invest a lot of time and find the financing and put some financing themselves in, into the movie is, um, you know, it's quite a big uh, risk-taking move, I would say. Yeah, but I hope tonight, after tonight, we but feel we, we made the right move. I think you totally did, and uh, yeah, respect for those guys. I'm really stoked you guys did it. And yeah. um, I have a question for you, though. Yeah. I think from from the audience, if you would have to choose between um, big air and wave riding, we just had that uh, oh, question. Oh, okay. Shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> Brom just asked me that one. I can answer it again if you want, but you I think you know the answer already. Okay. Um, if there's um, 
Yeah, if there I, are more questions from, from the audience. Let I, I know a question for you. What was the, the scariest part of filming the movie? Was it you got stopped by customs or you had to pay? Like the police to get away, or we did was get it arrested? But uh, uh? not for any film stuff. Um, but I think the scariest thing was maybe for Arthur to um, do some water shorts in, in Fiji at Cloud Break. It was a really big day, and uh, he was out there with his water housing with a red camera uh, inside, and it was fucking crazy. And he got washed. And I think maybe he, you know, he, it was pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> it was, Definitely it was not a comfortable uh, yeah, so situation. He, after that, he had to go to, to, to the jet ski and, and film from there. But, you know, I think those few, first few shots in there was maybe the, the, the trickiest trickiest part of the movie. Wow, sounds, uh, sounds very exciting. Yeah, to get the shot, you need to go into... Sometimes you have to put yourself in a critical situation. You know, we as writers put ourselves in critical situations a lot of times. But don't forget these guys. You know, they are running around, standing on rocks to get that right angle, or swimming in this gnarly ocean where you're not supposed to swim, and to get that very pretty shot. And uh, I think, uh, especially with Arthur, you know, he's uh, I think a great film a filmer and especially from the water he has a lot of uh, knowledge sure. about the good ocean surfer. and a good surfer himself and having guys like that on board uh, definitely helps, yeah. it's definitely uh, worth it a lot if we if we're filming like is it do you take that extra extra step extra risk or do you or do you feel different when we're filming or is it just like any other session well of course if you if you're going somewhere with a whole crew which usually was like eight eight to ten crew people and then some riders you know when we went to Ireland Ireland for example we had eight guys there and then we had a whole safety team there and then we had a couple fixer guys so we had a crew of like almost 20 25 people I would almost say and then it was yeah Ruben and myself and if all these guys are there to film you you better go for it you know you want to show your best move and your best uh, way of riding but um, Sometimes Mother Nature does something else, and uh, sometimes you get a bit unlucky. But also lucky. We we took a lot of risk in uh, in Ireland. I think it was blowing 60 plus knots. I've never ever kited in so much wind. The waves were huge, and it was pretty much close to unrideable. But you know, you have to go get out of your comfort zone and go out there and. Just do it. Was it more tricky than King of the Air? Like, because King of the Air, you, you, you go high and you, you mega loop. So it's also really, you choose to, to loop, you know? And I, I think in Ireland, there's less control. But which one is more scary? Because, you know, the force is maybe equal. Yeah, the, both are scary. Both, your heart rate is like a year. But Ireland was so close to unrideable because the wind was so, so strong and there was all these clouds that came by and then it was blowing like 50 knots and then a cloud came by and it was like 50 knots extra so you're like 65 knots with a six meter kite is, is quite hectic and is super scary as well and then if you have waves up to like eight nine meters it is pretty scary and it's not like a perfect point break it's like waves All everywhere over the place, yeah. And uh, that definitely uh, is a bit scary, but um, it also makes you feel alive and you learn a lot from it. But a king of the air is also scary, you know, if you have to jump 20 meter plus and do a kite loop and uh, do a back roll in between. So you're upside down doing a kite loop and uh, that's that's uh, definitely uh, pretty scary too. But uh, and you've seen the movie a, good a couple feeling. of times. What, uh, what, except for your own own parts, what's, what's your favorite part? Yeah, I would say don't go, it's really boring. <laughs> no, no, it's a great movie and it's especially great to see it on a big screen. The, the best part to me, um, I like the part with, with Robbie Nash. I think that was a really, really cool part. I'm not going to say too much about it, but Robbie uh, meets up with his dad and, and tells his life story on, on how he got into water sports and and when kiteboarding came along and they go out for a session and him together with his dad with beautiful aerial shots and a very well documented part and uh, that's definitely uh, yeah. one of my favorite parts but also the part of me and Yalu going to uh, to Indonesia yeah 
I think he scored in there. We got some pretty good waves, yeah. yeah. That's great. I think uh, we got a question on the on the iPad from a viewer. Oh. Um, question from Juliet. Favorite place in the world to shred? Whew, favorite place. I get the chance to go to all these beautiful places, but I think number one is still Cape Town for me. I know I have to stop promoting it because it's getting busier and busier every year. Please don't go there, there's too many sharks and they attack kiters and surfers, so don't go there. No, but Cape Town is definitely uh, my favorite spot. You can jump big, there's waves, there's good food, nice people. And uh, yeah, it just has, has, it's just something special for but me. Just for riding, because uh, Cape Town is like, it's great because you have all these things and, and you know, city life and the beach life combined, so you never get bored. But like just for riding that perfect wave, which, which is the wave that... that Actually, um, yeah, Mauritius. Mauritius is really, really good. Yeah. I uh, just went to Madagascar, which was. Oh, that's already I'm not giving. One. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not giving. One. Oh, yeah, that's already <laughs> one. But maybe if guys followed me on, on Facebook and Instagram, uh, they probably uh, saw it already. But uh, I'm not. You know, maybe I've been there more times. Who knows? So that's the question. Uh, to win the sweater, how many times have I been in Madagascar? But that place is really unique. Went all the way to the southern port of uh, point of Madagascar to this place uh, called Lavanono. Yeah. And it was crazy. There's nothing around there. The food is shit and there's, <laughs> there's nothing to do, but the wave is just absolutely beautiful. It's almost like Indonesia perfe perfection with no one around. And that's pretty much everyone's dream, right? But if there's no food, you cannot stay there for longer than three days. Like, let me tell you something no. about Kevin and food. <laughs> like, we, yeah. went, we went to Chile to shoot hidden lines. And it, like, if you want, if you like food, don't go to Chile. No. Because we, we had no wind, like the first two weeks in Chile. And no food. No food. Shit food. We were and eating like, these dry pieces of bread, remember? Yeah, it was the start of the production <laughs> and things were going downhill. Yeah, like, the, the mood was killing it. And it was, yeah, it was we need terrible. food. Yeah. Maybe for the next movie we shoot, we need a private chef yeah, to, okay, to come along with us. Yeah. yeah. So if there's anyone around that feels uh, <laughs> you know, wants to travel the world and cook some good meals for uh, for the iFirst team and for us as riders, then uh, come join us. Come on board. Yeah. Come on board. Cool. Cool. Well. We got some more people. We got some more tour. people to join. Yeah. We're yeah, gonna do uh, the, uh, the DOP of the movie. Thanks, Bob. All right. That was Bob. And uh Kevin. Water here. Just getting some drinks. We're doing a quick swap. Arthur is coming now. There he is. Arthur Neumeyer. He is the start the starter the starter of iForce, right? Together with you. Together with me. Yeah. Pretty uh and um, Nick Hoodeman of course. Yeah. Pretty crazy to be uh sitting here and um, I remember this guy came up to my house or he emailed me first he's like dude I want to make I started filming and I want to do a I want to make a, a movie of you and I'm like okay yeah sure uh, let's do it yeah. he said but he said yeah I don't have any budget but I want to do it and we're like okay but who's gonna finance it and then eventually uh, you came to my I house, came to right? house I dressed up really well I thought okay I bring a jacket <laughs> <laughs> look a bit fancy <laughs> And then, um, yeah, we came, I came to your house alone and you said to me, yeah, I'm going to be there with my manager, which was for me, like, <laughs> what does this guy have a manager? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I did have a manager and back then. then. Um, yeah, we started talking and I think it was a good, a very good thing. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't have been sitting here probably. Exactly. And then, yeah, we started to film uh, Cape Sessions, uh, Cape Sessions 1. And then next year, because number one was really successful, we started to do... Cape Sessions number two, which even got more successful. And then we came up with the idea to make a movie with two other guys, with uh, Nick Jacobs yeah. and uh, Yuri Zone, which are also in chapter one. And that was even, that blew our mind, right? Yeah, that was really nice. That was actually the first time that we thought, wow, this is, this is like cinema style. Yeah. Before that, it was all like internet clips and you see how many views you get online. That's very nice. But when, once you feel it like in a cinema, it's it's quite amazing. It is, yeah. huh? And that's actually also the thing why we I think we started to do this one. This one, right? Chapter, Chapter one. one. And now we're here. 
a couple of years later. Yeah. With seven years later, I think. With a whole cinema sold out, and that's actually pretty special. I think it's. Uh, how does it feel to you? Like, I asked the question yeah. to Egon as well. You know, you're here in your hometown, and the pressure is on. You know, you've been talking to your friends and telling them, yeah, I've been traveling around the world for two and a half years to yeah. film this movie, and you know, now you have to show show them what you did those two and a half years. And uh, I think, uh, you know, your mom and dad will probably be there as well, right? Yeah, they will be. And um, yeah, it's funny because, I mean, everybody knows we've been traveling a lot and nobody has seen anything from just a trailer. So uh, I kept it um, pretty like a, a well-deserved secret for today. And um, yeah, I think everybody's gonna like it. I think it's gonna be a, a very good experience, especially seeing it in the Tushinsky, one of the most beautiful theaters of Amsterdam. And um, being here with a lot of friends, a lot of family, and everybody around is, is quite amazing. Quite yeah. unique. Hey, what's uh, the funniest thing that happened along the way? Uh, that must be because you traveled, think, you pretty much did all the trips. Yeah. Two and a half years of traveling. What's yeah. the funniest one? Um, I think the time that we spent on the boat at Necker Island. That also, was, huh? Every night it was just like a lot of fun, but it's hard to, to say one moment, but it's just like sitting there with all your friends, with the riders and just having a lot of drinks every night. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, having, having a really good time while making a film, that was, that was probably the best, yeah. I think that's also the beauty, right? To, like all the guys that work. It's cool to see if, if I do a trip with the iForce guys, it's just, it seems like going on a trip with a bunch of friends. Yeah, and exactly. they're really good at what they're doing. And I think working that way makes it, a, it makes it a lot easier and a lot more fun to do than when everyone is just very individual, right? Yeah, no, for sure. Like everybody knows each other very well. We've been traveling with um, the photographers that work at our office as well. They are uh, Tommy and Lenz. We know them since we were like five years old. So. That's a really nice um, uh, crew to, to hang around with. And then I-Force is almost like a, a family. So yeah, no, really nice. No, That's uh, getting some water. It's been talking so much. Well, I've been talking a lot. Oh, <laughs> cheers, guys. To uh, chapter one, eh? Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers. To a glass of water. <laughs> to a glass of water. <laughs> Amsterdam tap water. The best. The best. Nowhere else in the world it tastes like that. No. Hey, and... Um, what? what do you think? Uh, what do you think is next? Uh. Because, uh, like now, it actually really, really starts that people can actually see the movie, and yeah. we're gonna hear what people think about it. But I think you're already thinking about next projects. We're thinking or about next projects. Yeah, but first we wanna um, like do a big European or worldwide tour with the film. So if everybody is interested in organizing a tour with us, just let us know. And then go to chapter one, the movie, chapter one, one movie, movie sorry, dot com. com. And there's all the information there. There's a yeah. lot of cool photos and behind yeah. the scenes stories and lists where the tour is going to be for the next show. So maybe it even be somewhere around where you are, you know, sorry yeah, to I, interrupt. I think but, so, I think so. but um, yeah, what's next? I don't know if it's going to be um, chapter two within one or two years. I think it takes a long time to do chapter two. First, we have to land this one and then um, have a few years of rest and then maybe come up with chapter two. But um, no, I would like to do like a really big surf movie. That's one of the my goals, actually. Surf movie, well, who knows? There must be a lot of surfers watching as well. <laughs> so uh, these guys are make, they're making an epic uh, surf, movie. surf movie. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna, gonna learn how to surf better, better. yeah. No, I'm not uh, that, that good of a surfer, but uh, who knows? Cool, man. So, um, yeah, we are all very excited for tonight, I hope. Oh, we still have some questions, eh? Do we have some questions? Yeah, you're on the iPad. He's going to see what the question is. What's the code? I don't know. What's the code? 1952. 1952. 1952. Wow. Check on news. Yeah. Uh, the code on the iPad is 1952. It's pretty cool. Question from Juliet. Favorite place in the world? <laughs> we had, that, we one had that one already. Yeah. The one um, from Reiner? Uh, yeah. Will you well, unhook for, Kai, for King of the Air? Well, I unhook, yeah, that's uh, maybe. I don't really want the King of the Air to go more towards 
handle passes. I think uh, we've done that. Well, I wouldn't call it mistake, but I. Uh, if you want to do the unhooked stuff, I think you will want to do that on tour. I think the beauty of the King of the Air is that we're going to go out with such a big kite that you can't even unhook. No. And um, we, I, I would like to see the sport, or I, I would like to see guys jump so stupidly big that you cannot even believe it's happening. And um, I think that's the beauty of the sport that you I can... I think that's also your signature, like going as high as possible, as far as possible, yeah. and then doing something It's the best feeling loops. in the world. Yeah. You know, every, I think every little kid dreams about flying when, they, when they're little. Well, I still dream about it almost every night, because yeah. I think flying is the coolest thing in the world. And with kiting, you can actually fly, you know? It's, it's not, uh, not that expensive to buy a kite and a board. And you can jump, if you know how to do it, you can jump up to like 20 meters. And uh, it's very unheard of for a lot of other sports to jump so big. And um, there's a lot of risk involved by, by going unhooked and there's a lot of accidents that are happening. Um, is it something that you're doing while you're not in a contest just for like having that extra boost of adrenaline? Or is it something you think like maybe it's, it's, it's too high and I'd rather stay away from uh, the, getting injured. No, the unhook stuff, well, you have to train, of course. And the unhook stuff I've been doing for many, many years on tour. So it's still in my system. I still ha know how to do them. And I haven't been, um, I'm, yeah, I've been training it a bunch, a little bit here and there, you know, yeah. just to keep, uh, keep it as a uh, secret weapon. Well, I'm actually telling it now, so it's <laughs> not much of a secret weapon anymore. But just delete that part. Yeah. Or just keep your ears shut or just don't tell it to anyone. But, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you're ahead of your competition with anything you do. And you have to train. But training for an event like the King of the Air is not easy. Because you're walking on such a thin line. And if you make one little mistake, you're injured and you're out for at least a year. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we saw two guys crash really hard in the, in the competition this year. It was Lasse and uh, Lewis. And that actually uh, was uh, quite a quite scary and there's a little part of yeah. that in chapter one as well that uh yeah there's a part of of, uh, of some really like serious uh crashing in chapter one and i think that's the part where you go like okay this is this, this is really next level like stuff next level serious <laughs> um stuff like landing on water is is fine but landing from 20 meters high on water going a million miles an hour miles is not fun, I can tell you not, that. It's not fun. No, and these guys, uh, yeah, unfortunately knocked themselves out and... Uh, luckily they survived. Luckily they survived, yeah, it was really close, but... Um, that was probably one of the, the, like, scariest moments on the beach, like, filming that, and you were there as well, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was, it was the most hectic thing to see, like, people being face down in the water for two minutes and then... Oh. Yeah, it was not fun. Unfortunately, that's a part of when you do an extreme sports, but uh, it's almost also a fun part, you know? It's uh, not if you crash, of course, but that feeling of almost crashing yeah. can really make you feel alive. And um, if you actually do crash, it's definitely not fun, but all the other great moments you get from it is really, uh, really good. Yeah. And, and uh, what's next for you in, in, uh, in kiteboarding? I don't know if somebody already asked, but... I heard you're on the water a lot, especially with the foil. Yeah, yeah. You know, the thing is, when I started kiting uh, when I was little, I was like, ah, maybe I'm gonna like this for five, six, seven years. I've been doing it for 16 years now, and even yesterday, you know, the wind was really light, and I still get those goosebumps to go out or that funny feeling in your stomach. And just grabbed my foil, went out in 10 knots, was all out there by myself. Only kited for like an hour, but I still love doing it and. I want to hopefully do that for the rest of my life. I, I want to find ways to scare myself and to, uh, to uh, learn new things. And, and is the foiling, is it like a total different sensation than normal kiteboarding? I heard you doing backflips and stuff as well right now? Or Trying. Yeah, trying. Trying. Yeah, the thing with foiling is when, uh, when you see it for the first time, it, it looks really boring. You're like, what the heck is that? It looks super lame. But once you try it yourself, it's really, really fucking difficult in the it beginning. Is. You just fall on the foil the whole time and you're like, in the beginning you think you're never ever gonna get it. But once you get the hang of it, it is just such a unique feeling. It's almost like snowboarding on powder. And that's pretty much what everyone wants. You know, that feeling of 
of gliding. of gliding and having no noise is just it's it's magic. It is like like you're flying constantly on a board. Hey, and what was the um, you've seen the movie already? What was the part that you say, whoa, I didn't expect that one or I didn't see that one coming? Um, or did you find out something new that you didn't know about? Yeah, that was pretty much, I think, uh, that kite boat from Don Montague. Yeah. When we were in San Francisco last week, we had the chance, Don Montague actually invited us to, to come on his kite boat. And I had seen it before. And he built this customized kite boat with foils underneath. And he has a 40 meter square meter kite that pulls the boat along. And I saw some footage from it and I, I was already blown away when I saw the footage, but then he asked us to, if he wanted to go for a spin and I didn't, I didn't hesitate for a second. I was like, oh yeah, let's go, when are we going, you know? And we had the time to go uh, spend some time on the boat and that thing was just, it was next level. Like I thought I was really, really impressed on how he developed the whole thing and how he, how innovative he, he is with all his systems he made and how fast he's going. And he's trying to set the record to go from San Francisco to Hawaii in less than three days. And he asked you to and, come with, right? Well, I asked him <laughs> if I could come with, but you never know, there's limited spots on the boat. But yeah. um, if, he, if he asks me, I'm, I'm not gonna say no, that's for sure. I would love to shoot a documentary about that. That could it's be crazy. Project, it's crazy. It's, that thing goes so fast. It's, it's crazy. So I, I definitely, I really believe that he's going to set the world record and uh, not any other sailboat is, uh, will be able to, to do anything like that. Like that. Hey, and uh, the dress code tonight, what do you think Nick and Yuri will wear? Are you going to get shaved heads? Uh, Nick will probably wear something funny like a, like a dress or something, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Yuri is going to go super fancy and I'm probably just going to go like this. <laughs> I have my long hair and uh, yeah. Big Cape Sessions hair, Cape right? Sessions hair yeah. and uh, that's the way we roll. All right. I think um, we're coming to an end. I think we're coming to an end as well. Let's and um, Tushinsky, no? We're heading to Tushinsky. And uh, if you are um, going to be there tonight, I want to already welcome you from here. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, keep an eye out on the O'Neill Facebook for more cool stuff and make sure you sign up to win this t-shirt and some other cool things. Um, thanks for watching. I want to thank the iForce crew for making this epic movie. Thank we you. transfer O'Neill Mystic. Everybody. Everybody that is involved in this, uh, this uh, epic movie. If you're not uh, in Amsterdam or, Amsterdam or anywhere around, make sure you tune in on the 10th of October. Yep. Red Bull TV. It's gonna be live on there for 24 hours for everyone to watch in the world. It's gonna premiere online. And if you missed that one, or if you've seen that one, buy it on, online on iTunes. Yeah, you can also uh, buy it on iTunes. When is, it, when is it going the on tent. iTunes? Also the 10th. Also the 10th of uh, yeah. October. So that's uh, very soon, that's in two weeks. So um, yeah, stay tuned and make sure you hit a little follow on uh, iForce Instagram and Facebook and my Instagram and Facebook and of course the O'Neill ones and we will see you later.